Hey, what's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this $28 7 inch Android tablet from Walmart. Now, as you can see, this is on branded and in the past, I've actually taken a look at the first generation of this surf on tablet, but this one happens to be the second generation with a new CPU, new screen and a little bit more RAM. Now, like I mentioned, these are really going for $28 right now. I'll leave a link in the description. You can actually walk into your local Walmart and they'll probably have about a hundred of these on the shelf. There's no doubt in my mind that by the end of Black Friday, thousands of these will be sold. But is it even worth $28? That's what we're going to find out in this video. We're going to do an unboxing. I'm going to run some benchmarks. We're going to test some native Android gaming, some video playback and some emulation. So right off the bat, looks like we have a quick start guide and a few different coupons for different online shopping experiences that you can do with Walmart. Next up, we have the tablet itself. It's just wrapped in a little plastic bag, nothing special here. I mean, it's definitely a small tablet. It's a seven inch tablet, but it's got some heft to it. It does use USB type C for charging and sync. So we get that USB type C cable and a five volt 1.5 amp charger. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up for the first time. I want to take a look at this screen because that was one of the big drawbacks for the first generation. The screen on it was just really bad. And this one here definitely has some brightness to it. It's rated as an IPS display, but it's not a top of the line IPS. When you're looking at it head on, it looks fine, but the viewing angles on this thing aren't that great. So like I mentioned, this does utilize USB type C for charging and sync here on the bottom. Moving around to the top, we do get a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot, plus a single pinhole microphone. As for physical buttons on this tablet, we have our power button and our volume rocker, and that's really about it around the edges of this tablet. If we take a look around back, it has a single speaker setup, and the rear camera is a five megapixel camera. Now in this video, I'm not gonna do any shots with the camera front or rear, because I can tell you right now for a $30 tablet, these cameras are gonna be horrible. That's not why you buy a tablet. So far, given the price of this thing at $28, it's really not looking like a bad deal, but we definitely need to get into some performance. But before we do that, let's go over the specs of this thing. So for the CPU, it's using the MediaTek 8168. It's a Cortex A53 ARM CPU, four cores at two gigahertz. And interestingly enough, this is the same chip being used in the all new 2020 Amazon Fire HD8 and the HD8 Plus. And I was actually really surprised to see that it was using this chipset here. Now it's not a high end chipset nor a mid range chipset. It's more of a low end SOC, but in this $30 tablet, I figured they were gonna use something a lot less powerful. The GPU is the Mali G52 MC2. It's backed by two gigs of RAM. We have 16 gigabytes of internal storage and a micro SD card slot. I've only personally tested a 256 gigabyte card, but it is working fine. We have a seven inch IPS display at 1024 by 600. So it's lower resolution than the Amazon Fire tablets. Another thing that kind of surprised me is this thing does have AC Wi-Fi built in. It's 802.11 AC and Bluetooth 4.2. It's got a 2200 milliamp hour battery. They're claiming up to five hours of video playback, which is pretty short, but I'm not really complaining here because I only paid $28 for it. And it's running Android 10 Go Edition. All right, so here we are. I've installed a bunch of apps to test out. There is a little Walmart icon over here and there's three pre-installed apps, Voodoo, Walmart, and Sam's Club. And all three of these can be disabled from within the settings. But in this little area, you can actually add your favorite apps. Personally, I would just disable this completely from within the settings. But overall, I mean, the user interface is pretty snappy for a $30 tablet. I was actually surprised to see how well it works. Here we are with Google Play. Takes a second to load all the images in, but once it's loaded up, it's pretty snappy as you can see. So now it's time to get into some video playback. We're gonna test out YouTube here. Netflix is also available from the Google Play Store. Everything loads up pretty nicely here. We're at 720p. Even though the screen can't reach exactly 720p, it is a pretty low resolution screen. But as long as you have a good network connection, streaming from your favorite apps, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and even YouTube, isn't gonna be an issue on this tablet here. We actually have plenty of power for video playback. And if this was a 1080p screen, we could do 1080p 60 all day with it. As for the volume, it actually gets pretty loud, but when you jack it all the way up, it gets tinny. And I'm glad that they added that headphone jack because that's gonna be the best way to experience your favorite movies on a tablet like this. The single speaker they've added here is definitely a cheap one and it's not the greatest. Whenever I do a review on a tablet or phone, I always like to run a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 Single Core 132 Multi 440. Like I mentioned, this has the same CPU as the new Amazon Fire HD8 and the HD8 Plus, so I figured I'd go ahead and compare it here. On the Fire 8 HD Plus, we scored a single core of 144 and a multi of 452, so we're really not that far off here. 
moving over to a GPU benchmark. This is 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. Unfortunately, this on tablet does not support Vulkan out of the box. I really wish it did. We only have OpenGL, but we scored a 661. And on the Fire 8 HD Plus, it scored a 658. Now the Plus model does have one more gig of RAM, but if you did opt for the regular old Fire 8 HD, you basically have the same exact specs here. Two gigs of RAM with that MediaTek CPU. So performance between the two is gonna be on par. Moving over to some native Android gaming, here we have Minecraft. I've turned fancy graphics off and I'm set to eight chunks. It's definitely playable. It's not the best that I've seen, but for a $30 tablet, I think it's handling this really, really well. Taking it up a notch to Real Racing 3. By the way, I do have an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth and it pairs right up. As you can see, this game is also playable, but when it comes down to it, this is a very well optimized game and I've been able to play this on very low end tablets in the past. And finally, we have Call of Duty Mobile. And to my surprise, it runs pretty decently. I mean, this is actually pretty awesome to see this running on a $30 tablet. Now, I would not suggest to go out and buy this tablet specifically for Call of Duty Mobile, but if you are on a super tight budget, just note that it will run on this tablet here, and it is playable. Moving over to a little bit of emulation, first up we have PS1, I was pretty sure we'd get great performance out of this, and as you can see we're running at 60 FPS with one of the harder games to emulate, which is Bloody Roar 2. I'm using RetroArch with the PC SX Rearm Core. Here's N64 using Mupin64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store. I'm running Diddy Kong Racing here, and performance is actually great. As you can see here, I mean, this is fully playable. I'm still using that Xbox One controller, but I wouldn't expect this tablet to run every single N64 game at full speed. It's really dependent on the emulator. As a lot of us already know, there are some harder to emulate games like GoldenEye 007 that won't perform as well as Diddy Kong Racing did but I'd say it's not that bad for a $30 tablet. And finally, for emulation, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, we're running at full speed. There's going to be a lot of great Dreamcast games that will run just fine on this tablet, but you will run into some that just struggle a bit, even at the lowest settings, like one of the harder ones to run, Dead or Alive 2. So I've got this at the lowest settings we can go, I do have frame skip on, and it just won't cut it with this CPU here. Had the same exact problem with the Fire HD 8. Now since this tablet has AC Wi-Fi built in, I figured I'd test out a little bit of cloud gaming. I'm going to go with one of my favorites, Project X Cloud, and we'll do Forza Horizon 4. So I'm kind of running into the same issue I have on other lower end devices. Video stream is great, I mean it's not the highest quality. Obviously you will get some input lag with cloud gaming, but it's not all that bad. The biggest issue I personally have on lower end devices is audio. As you can hear, it's just not a steady audio stream. There's a lot of glitching going on with that. And as you can see, the video is pretty smooth here, it's just that audio, and this happens all the time on lower end devices. So it's definitely not a top of the line tablet, but I gotta say, I was really impressed with the performance here given that it's $28 right now. I think it's totally worth it if you're on a tight budget and you're looking for a cheap Android device. 
It's got AC Wi-Fi built in, it loads out and buffers videos really quickly. It's not the highest resolution screen or the best looking IPS that I've tested, and we only have that single speaker, but it's really hard for me to complain about this tablet because after all, it's under $30, and it actually outperforms some more expensive tablets that I've tested here on the channel. So if you're looking for the best budget tablet for under 30 bucks, really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you wanna see running on this tablet, just let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a link to Walmart in the description, but remember, you can pick these up from your local Walmart for this exact same price right now. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.